this work? Yeah. Um, cool. So, hey, everybody. Um, my name is Lauren Bedorik, and I work at Mapbox. But I also work on Project OSRM, the open source routing machine. And so you may be familiar with OSRM, at least insofar as the thing that powers the routing feature on OpenStreetMap.org. But it also powers a lot of other cool features. Um, <clears throat> but so today I want to talk to you about uh, how you can use OSRM, how you can help contribute to OSRM, and how you can contribute to OSRM with better quality data, um, specifically in regards to biking directions. So as you probably know, or at least assume, uh, OSRM uses OpenStreetMap as its data source. Um, so I'm not going to go too far into the routing algorithm behind OSRM right now, but we use something called contraction hierarchies as the method. And as a general rule with, with routing algorithms, um, <clears throat> there tends to be a trade-off between preprocessing time and query time. So uh, contraction hierarchies are pretty far to one extreme of this, where we spend a lot of time preprocessing the graph, but as a result, the queries are really fast, which is pretty great. Uh, but so what this preprocessing means is that we, we um, <clears throat> process the graph of the world or of an OSM extract based on a specific routing profile. And so um, for, as an example, say you wanted to build something like, this is kind of silly, but a segue routing tool in San Francisco. So you would have an extract of San Francisco and you're gonna write a routing profile for just the specific rules to how segues route. Uh, so what you should know about segways is that their max speed is 12 and a half miles per hour and they, so they can only go on really slow roads and like where I live there are these segway tours of 12 segways at a time and that's kind of crazy. So you probably only want roads tagged highway residential. Um, and you maybe can ride on paths but no stairs and maybe only paths where bicycles are also allowed because otherwise they probably wouldn't be happy with segways. So it's going to read all the nodes, uh, the extractor will read all the nodes in all the ways in San Francisco and it's going to throw most of them away. So what you end up with is something more like this, which is actually not bad because San Francisco is like a big suburb of itself. But, but so that's, um, <clears throat> this is the graph that the actual querying will, will be running every time. So that's kind of an absurd example, but the point is that the routing code in OSRM doesn't change at all based on what, what kind of uh, transportation profile you're running. It's just querying a different graph uh, every time. So, but today I'm going to talk about bicycle directions. Um, and so in OSRM, we have three default profiles, which are the car, walking, and biking directions. Um, and we've had a lot of great contributions to make these pretty sta stable, pretty reliable profiles. But so today I'm going to go over specifically bicycle profiles. Um, how does the default OSRM bicycle profile work, and how might you build your own? How can you help make cycling directions better with data? And what's on our roadmap for OSRM to improve the quality of cycling directions? So I'm going to walk through first uh, basically how bicycle routing works in OSRM. So our default bicycle profile expresses the traversal patterns of a normal, um, like a road or urban cyclist, so your typical commuter. So we assume a few things about this bicyclist. So for example, we assume that you are okay with routing on ferries. Uh, we assume that you're okay with public transportation, so just taking your bike on a train. We assume that you're okay with pushing your bike on a sidewalk where you can't otherwise ride a bike if it's the fastest way to get through. We assume that you're okay with steps if, if necessary, if that's the, the fastest way through. Um, because this cyclist is just interested in the fastest way to get from point A to point B. So then we set some default speeds of your average cyclist. So these are all in uh, kilometers per hour because European. So um, the default speed for bicycles is 15 kilometers per hour. So it's like nine miles an hour and a walking speed is six kilometers per hour. And then we can decide what speed to assign based on the road type in OSM. Uh, and then we can assign some different pedestrian speeds assign different speeds based on railways or amenities or train platforms, piers, ferries, movable bridges. Um, and then we can configure these different rules that we've kind of enumerated in this profile where uh, in this case, we're gonna obey one ways, we don't obey bollards, which are those metal things that stick out of the ground, I'd look that up. Um, and and we, these are pretty configurable though if you're running your own bicycle routing engine, you wanna just tweak the rules slightly. So <laughs> how does this work? So we use Lua, which is a scripting language that binds really well to C++. Uh, so all the profiles that we have are written in Lua because the OSRM extractor looks specifically for two functions in a Lua profile, and those are the node function and the wave function. So these are the, uh, the crux of our Lua profiles. And the extractor parses all the nodes and all the ways in parallel, and it runs them through their respective profiles. So it does so like this. So for nodes, it decides um, it's interested primarily in whether a node is traver traversable by this uh, particular profile. So you just want to know basically if there is a relevant barrier that you can't cross, um, then we're going to set barrier true. And we save that information. And for ways, we want to know two things. One, can we traverse this way? And two, how fast? So first we check the tags and we kind of put it through the ringer here of like, is this the type of way that we're allowed to traverse at all to decide if we're even going to keep the way? And if so, 
we're going to analyze all these different tags to decide uh, what the speed limit would be, uh, what direction it's going to be in, because there's all kinds of different uh, one-way combinations when it comes to bicycles. Uh, whether you should be pushing your bike, whether it has cycleway tags and what those might mean for the speed, whether you should dismount your bike at this way. If it has surface tags, how we're going to change the max speed based on that surface. Um, and then it, it kind of evaluates all of those and returns what it thinks is the speed limit of this way. And later, the contractor will use these to build a graph, and that'll, that's what will be queried. But this is obviously not indicative of all cyclists, this particular profile. So consider different types of biking. You might have, this is kind of the commuters, like the fastest uh, type of routing, um, but you might be interested in something like a scenic route that's kind of family friendly, so slower roads, or you might be interested in something for a cargo bicycle that's carrying a lot of stuff, or maybe mountain biking uh, might have different tolerance of elevation, which is something I'll get into later. But say, for example, you want to use OSRM and write your own mountain biking profile. So how might you do that? So you're going to kind of make a couple assumptions about what a mountain biking profile is going to look like. So you want places probably where highway equals path or highway equals track, and you are only interested in places with maybe mountain bike specific tags or most interested in those places. And you definitely don't want places where it has a bicycle access restriction. And you're going to write a profile that looks a little bit like uh, the profile is already in OSRAM, so it needs a node function and a way function. And the primary goal of the node function, again, is just to see, is this passable? So you're going to kind of evaluate whatever different tags are at that given node and decide whether this has a barrier and you can't cross with a mountain bike. And then the way function, the primary goal, again, is how fast, if at all, can you cross this way? So um, you're going to kind of decide based on all the different tags of this way, and maybe you want to know about um, the specific those are mountain biking um, like rating tags that'll define that'll inf influence at least what the speed will be that you'll return. But so maybe you've written this profile and it works really well, and now you find errors where you can't route from point A to point B, and you're kind of surprised because you expect that to work. Um, and OSRM is really mature, and it can it can find where you're trying to go. So in this case, as long as you've written a well-defined profile, your your problem is a data error. So how can how can you help improve cycling directions with OSM data? So as you probably have gathered by now, OSM data quality is super important to routing. And there are three things that can cause routing problems primarily. And those are data coverage, tagging consistency, and connectivity. So coverage is kind of a broader issue that is not routing specific, obviously. But um, when you query an OSRM instance, you're only querying a modified graph of just the parts of the world that the computer thinks you can ride a bicycle on. So you've already thrown away everything that isn't related to these tags. So we say, for example, but if you have an empty or a non-existent uh, highway tag and route tag and railway tag and amenity tag and man-made tag and public transfer tag and bridge tag, then you're probably something like a building and you don't want to ride a bike down a building. So you want to ride along something that has to be tagged uh, appropriately. Um, and OSM is actually really amazing because it has so much high quality bicycle data. And there are some, some companies out there that have good bicycle data but it's not open source or you can't buy it, or you can't contribute to it, or you can't use it outside of their application. So we're pretty lucky to have this in OSM. And we're also working with RunKeeper to use their cycling traces to make OSM cycling coverage even better. But so back to tagging quality. A lot of things are, are pretty obvious. So tagging something as a highway um, is, is not that hard to figure out. But there are some tags that specifically and disproportionately affect bicycle routing. So for example, surface tags are so important for bicycle routing, um, for figuring out how, how bikeable something is. And they're, they're not all that prevalent, and they're nowhere near as prevalent as they should be. So you can more or less walk or drive similarly on a lot of surfaces, but you certainly can't bike similarly on asphalt versus paving stones versus gravel versus sand. So we can set all these really specific settings for how well you can bike on something, but we can only do so if those tags are, are, are there. Another thing that's really important is cycleway tags. So you should tag things according to the rules as set forth in the OSM wiki, and there's actually this great page with all the cycling uh, rules. And I bet you some of these are probably kind of like surprising to see how many different combinations of bike lanes and road lanes and uh, highway, um, all these different combinations of cycleway tags, highway tags. And it's, it's definitely something you should look up when in doubt because low quality or imperfect cycling data means we're making incorrect assumptions in a routing engine. Um, and then another thing is bicycle access tags. So these are kind of a pain, and they're kind of confusing, because if you can't ride a bike on something, you might assume that you should tag it bicycle equals no. But actually, bicycle equals no means that you can't have a bike at all, but you're probably allowed to push a bike. Um, and so in that case, 
that tag should actually be bicycle equals dismount, because then we can say you can get off your bike at that point and you can push your bike. And so if it says bicycle equals no, then the routing engine is forced to assume that you can't bike along this path. Um, and there are other important tags like width, max speed, and lanes that help us determine how safe something is for bicyclists. And then connectivity is another really big issue in routing. And routing engines are actually, like I said, pretty useful for finding errors. Um, because when you expect to be able to route from A to B and you can't, you can, tip, you can t uh, pretty much assume that there's a connectivity error that you can, you can find and fix. Uh, so it's crucial for routing that things are connected well. So for example, like I said earlier, you can bring a bike on a ferry, but you can only do so according to your routing engine if it's connected to the road network, otherwise you'll never find it. Um, and there are all these discussions, for example, of sidewalks as being separate ways from roads. And I don't know what the right answer to that is, but basically if your profile says that sidewalks are permissible, um, or you can at least push a bike on a sidewalk, and the nearest neighbor to your starting point is a sidewalk, but then the sidewalk's not well connected to the rest of the graph, then your routing is going to break down, and that's problematic. So you can do a lot in OSM to help make cycle, uh, bicycle routing even better. And finally, I'm going to talk about uh, what's on a roadmap to make cycling directions better in OSRM. So we recently rolled out an instance of, of uh, cycling directions on the Mapbox Directions API. And our team was, we kind of soft launched it to our team and said, try this out and see how it works. And everyone's like, what are these routes? These are ridiculous. Um, and so there's some examples. People are like, this is unsafe. This is weird. There's cobblestones here. This is too fast. Um, and, and I can tell you why this is. And there were a couple that were, in, in fact, data issues. So there was one where there was cobblestones, and it was just missing the surface tag. But here's an example of a route from my office to where I used to live. Um, and this, I thought about making an elevation chart, and then I'm a procrastinator, so I didn't. So, but I, trust me when I say that once you start biking through Hayes Valley there, you start going up this huge hill up to Alamo Square, and it's super unpleasant on a bike. Um, and there's a, an alternate route that's really well known to bicyclists in San Francisco. If you've ever biked in San Francisco, you're probably familiar with the Wiggle. Um, and this is this like magically flat route that routes through this really hilly part of San Francisco, and no one really knows how it exists, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> but so there are two reasons why OSRM doesn't route down the Wiggle. Uh, one is that it doesn't support o external data in mainline OSRM right now, and the other is that it doesn't support relations. Um, so when it comes to external data support, what I'm primarily talking about, our biggest use case is SRTM data, which is the shuttle radar topography mission is elevation data for the whole world, which is pretty amazing. Um, so uh, the problem is it's, it's pretty um, burdensome to query an entire like, data for the entire world. And some of our users of OSRAM, I know Richard Fairhurst has done so in Cycle to Travel, and Emil Tin has done this in iBike Copenhagen, have forked it and written um, great implementations of like post-gist queries from, Lua, from the Lua profiles. But that's actually not fast enough to scale for the entire world. So we're working on writing um, native C++ memory mapped uh, raster implementations so that you can do something like load, or, load a source straight from your Lua profile, like the world, the entire SRTM for the world. Uh, and then you can just query it based on a given lat long and see, in this case, like how, you know, how steep it is, which is huge for something like a bicycle heuristic. Or maybe you want to do something like load or localized uh, data set for bicycle injuries. So you want to know like, how, how, how dangerous is a given intersection. Um, so that's going to be great to be able to in incorporate whatever data th that you're interested in uh, incorporating in your profile. And then another thing is relation support. So relations are kind of an arbitrary data model, right? So nodes and ways are really straightforward for us to parse, and we parse them in parallel. Because something is either a node or it's a way, and it's probably connected to the other if it's the kind of node we're interested in. But relations are a collection of, of ways, and so they're kind of more complicated where we have to break this parallel parsing paradigm that we have um, in order to parse the ways first and then go back to the relations. But it's so important because um, this is San Francisco without bike routes, and it's pretty hard to know what's, what's ideal. Um, but then these are the bike routes which are represented as relations in OSRM. So to be able to uh, include bike routes, which as we know are kind of um, carefully planned to be more safer or otherwise kind of ideal, preferable to what a routing engine might naively return. Um, and then a third thing we're working on is separating speed and edge weight. So like I said, the weight function returns a speed which is used to calculate how preferable a given, a given uh, edge is. And that works really well for vehicle routing because in a vehicle you're typically interested in the fastest route from A to B. But that assumption breaks down with bikes because like I said earlier, there's maybe when you're going on the wiggle it's gonna take much longer but it's, you're not super sweaty by the time you get there so it's definitely preferable. So for example, here is a route from my neighborhood to the Presidio. 
Um, and what this doesn't show, but it's true, is that immediately as soon as you leave, you're biking over Russian Hill, which is just this huge hill, and it's a terrible idea. Like, I think one of those is one of the steepest intersections in San Francisco, or steepest, like, blocks. Um, so that's pretty awful. This is just a slightly longer route, um, but it's totally preferable, because you bike a little bit downhill, and then it's totally flat the rest of the way. But ultimately, because we're scoring things based on their speed right now um, in profiles, in order to tell the routing engine that it's preferable not to cross over this hill, we have to score it really low and say that it has a really low speed. But we also use that speed in the end to calculate the travel time. So if we score that really low, but for some reason a, a given edge that's low, low scored um, is included in our final route, then we're ultimately like, lying to a routing engine. So the top route here is only going to be returned if the routing engine thinks it's the fastest. And in that case, in this case, it's not true, but we'd still rather return it. So we're working on um, separating travel time and, and heuristics so that we can return better routes like that. Um, so I could keep going for a while, but that's all I got for today. <laughs> Do you have questions? A uh, totally different project. Uh, sorry, the question was, did we initially take a look at Open Trip Planner and decide that it was not for our needs, or was it a different project? And it was a totally different project from the start. Um, project OSRM has been around for, I don't know, a bunch of years, so I didn't start it. And uh, yeah, they're just separate. Any other questions? Sorry, can you? Right, with high elevation. Uh, when it's got a high elevation, but but it's. Um, sorry, I'm not sure. Yep. Sure. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to let someone who's better at that work on that. Uh, but we're, we've got a proof of concept working that just on a localized SRTM extract and um, OSM ex, uh, extract works really well. So. Massive data files, they really are. So um, I'm finding actually it's quite easy to compress the SRTM data into something that doesn't take up so much room because obviously hills don't go sort of up and down. Um, you can do differential compression to say, you know, you're just going up between this point and that point um, by a couple of meters. And so you can get, you know, you can actually get certainly most of North America fitting in. Um, you know, just a couple of gigabytes, which I know I say just a couple of gigabytes, but when you're talking about the processing memory requ required for OSRM, it's not that big after all. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, the question was, do you think about doing different types of routing, so like next to a, a park or something? And I, th I, th I mentioned that briefly at the beginning, like there are some, you might want like scenic bicycle routing, so that. Uh, can indeed um, do something like that, and you'd have to do some more geospatial analysis to see uh, to score something based on how close it was to a, a lake or a park or something. Um, but I know like Emil Tin of Ibag Copenhagen is working on that exact thing of doing like scenic routes in Copenhagen. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible. Sure. Uh, 
Um, do, you, do you take an according to like public transit? For example, on New Jersey transit trains, inbound trains from like 6 a.m. till like 10 a.m., you are not allowed to bring a bicycle. Um, do you think open street, like, you know, with your route by route guidance, do you think there's it was a way to tag them as, you know, just like, hey, you can't bring a bike on a train so it doesn't like end up screwing up your day? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm by no means an OSM expert, but I don't know uh, specifically what that tagging schema would look like. Um, and we, at this point, OSRM doesn't do like temporal based data, though you could uh, kind of hack it and do that. Um, but it's an interesting question, yeah. Sure. What's the relationship between uh, Mapbox and OSRM? Like if I wanted to call something to produce a route for me, do I use OSRM or do I use Mapbox? Um, so OSRM is a totally open source, completely separate project. Uh, and you can run your own OSRM instance. It's like, it's kind of a big, heavy server stack. Um, so the Mapbox Directions API is definitely a convenience as far as we see it. But also, I mean, people are running their own custom profiles on OSRM instances, and that's, that's a free thing to do. Yeah, sure. Sure. So the question was, uh, have you looked at an algorithm that gives multiple alternate paths? And OSRM does have an option to include alternates right now. So it'll, re it'll return alternate paths if there are similarly scored paths. Um, part of your question might have been kind of what de routes depending on a user's preference, and that would be more of a profile-defined preprocessing step. But it, but it does return uh, a couple alternates right now if you ask for that option. So um, I, I talked a bit about how we, or the wave function returns speed as a part of a heuristic, and then about how we want to separate speed from, uh, separate speed and the heuristics of a wave function. Um, so once we use a separate heuristic where it's like a score and then it, it just separately has a speed defined, um, we'll be able to just score steep paths at a lower score. Or we could do it right now, technically, by just giving it a slower score. Uh, but like I said, that's not totally accurate for travel time. But yeah, it's just all part of the heuristics. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, no, I know that the question was time-dependent routes in public transit. Um, the, I mentioned earlier the train thing, and that's really just like for only train tags available in OSM. So I know that Open Trip Planner is particularly good for, uh, for public transit, so. Uh, there's there's sort of like a, a much kind of a different thing on our timeline, which is a bit related, but the OSRM v2 launch, which is still a ways out into our future, will uh, be a different pre-processing step, which means that hopefully by doing faster pre-processing, we'll be able to handle temporal data um, and other things. So traffic and custom profiles and things, but that's pretty far into the horizon. Yeah. Sure. So is there a repo for all these different uh, routing profiles? Um, if not, I think that'd be a pretty cool addition to um, the OSRM GitHub. Yeah, uh, so it's um, in the OSRM, project OSRM slash OSRM backend has a folder called profiles, and that's got the three default profiles. Um, I don't think it has, a, it doesn't, we don't have an aggregate right now of people's other open source custom profiles, so that would be a really great addition to our wiki, for example, because there are several people who have written custom profiles and open source them, so that's a great idea. Any questions? Cool, well thank you.